Hey all here OS Reviews, today we're taking a retro look back at the Apple iPhone 4 here in 2020. This was a smartphone released in June of 2010, making it now 10 years old or a decade old, so time really does fly. This video is mainly for nostalgic reasons, but we'll also touch on whether some portions of the functionality are still usable a decade later. So one thing that's held up pretty well in terms of the iPhone 4 is its design. Although its footprints are tiny and minuscule next to the newer iPhones that have a much larger display, it did usher a very premium design language that's still kept in circulation on Apple's latest devices. So we have Corning Gorilla Glass on the front as well as on the back, which does make it look quite shiny and reflective. Of course, on these earlier phones, it didn't come with benefits like wireless charging, but still made it look quite premium, and the band was also made out of a stainless steel material. Other notable features at the time included being the first iPhone to come with a retina display, which is around HD quality, and on a smaller display like this, it actually still remains quite sharp. It was really a huge leap forward compared to the iPhone 3G and 3GS, which were much more pixelated. Other than that, this was the first iPhone that came with a 1GHz processor. It was the Apple A4 chip, which at the time was top of the line, coupled with half a gig of RAM. Although iOS has always been optimized to run pretty smoothly, even on hardware that seems on paper a little slower than many of their Android counterparts. Taking a closer look, on the rear here we do have a 5 megapixel camera with autofocus and a single LED flash. On the bottom here there was that classic 30 pin connector, which is something that I have to say I don't miss too much, just because it was not as easy to use as the reversible lightning ports or the type C ports that we have today. And then on the very top, there's a on-off switch, a 3.5mm headphone jack. Yes, that's always something nice to see on a legacy device. And on the side, there is a mute switch, which is also a very nice touch that has been retained since the first generation of iPhones. Many Android devices simply don't have this extra little touch. There's also dedicated volume keys, which are pretty responsive and tactile, and that is it. So very clean design. Above the display, for the first time on an iPhone, was also the front-facing camera. Although the quality is definitely subpar by today's standards, not going to be a great selfie cam, but it did allow it to support functions like FaceTime for the very first time. Now, in terms of software, the iPhone 4 supports up to iOS version 7.1.2, which is what you're seeing here today. Just like on the latest iPhones from today, their icons are actually quite similar. The fact that you can customize the wallpaper in the background, the font size, things like that, have actually held up pretty well and it also brought along some of the gestures that we have now come to expect on their devices, including accessing shortcuts to various features. Although we can see some of the icons here being a little bit different, the main operation still remains pretty similar. We can also double tap on the home key, for example, to open up the multitasking. And one area that Apple has always done well on is providing longer software updates and support to their devices compared to, say, Google and Android. With that being said, iOS 7 is definitely outdated in other senses, for example, supporting the latest applications. You can go into the App Store, you can search most popular titles such as Netflix, uh, YouTube, Google Apps, even social media apps like, say, WhatsApp or Facebook, and most of them will unfortunately just not be supported. If you tap on Install, 99% of the time you'll come across an error message that the application simply does not support your device anymore. Uh, I found that to be true for basically any mainstream app out there. You tend to need at least uh, iOS version 8 or 9 uh, in order to install them. Now, there is still a small handful of apps in the store that still supports devices as old as iOS 7, but they're mostly apps which haven't been updated in a very long time. It's just uh, no longer as robust, and it's kind of a niche uh, segment these days. But but here are a few titles that do still work, and the ones that you can install definitely still perform all right in terms of their performance, but definitely a very scarce collection. Perhaps the most disappointing uh, kind of function that you can't use anymore would be YouTube. Technically, the app was still able to be downloaded. However, internally, once you open up the app, it will tell you to try an update to a newer version. We see that here with the update required. You must update to continue, and there's only two options to either quit or uh, to update. And you can't update because, again, this is the latest version that it supports. If you quit, it jumps into the browser and opens up the mobile version of YouTube.com, which technically does work, although it's just a little bit more clunky in terms of its navigation and uh, optimization. It's not quite as smooth. 
That means if you're getting this device to, again, use for social media or to use for downloading games and titles, applications from, that is a portion which unfortunately it's no longer really uh, usable. With that being said, if you're using it for more basic functions like light web browsing in addition to making phone calls, uh, taking occasional photos, things like that, then for sure it definitely still serves those purposes. In terms of the phone's uh, overall smoothness and responsiveness here on iOS 7 is still also not bad, and that is quite surprising on a version of the software that has been uh, kind of updated many years since the phone was first released with iOS version 5. The optimization is done better than the iPhone 4S, which supports all the way up to iOS version 9. However, the optimization is not as good on the F4S just because iOS 9 requires more power, more memory, in addition to faster processing speed for it to run smoothly. And that's why many 4S devices, I would say, comes close to being unusable on iOS 9 these days, just because uh, whenever you click on something, you have to wait up to, say, 30 seconds for it to load. Animations are super slow and choppy. Uh, versus on iOS 7, you can see that the 4 still is relatively smooth. So we're talking about decent overall fluidity in the OS, still uh, be functional and look pretty modern even on an older version of the system. And uh, all these basic tasks do still work. So if you're looking more for a feature phone, something to make phone calls with, and uh, you know some occasional texting, those areas it does still handle in a relatively okay way. Now, in terms of creating notes, it's a good opportunity to bring up this uh, keyboard. Although the touchscreen's responsiveness is quite good, the size of the keys are definitely pretty small by 2020 standards since we've been spoiled by larger phones these days. So by contrast, the keys are definitely a bit more cramped. There isn't swipe support, but at least it is pretty responsive. You can use the accelerometer to rotate it and get a slightly better typing experience. If we take a quick look at the camera, again, it's five megapixels, and uh, it's not bad for a device of its age. It does support HDR, and it does support video recording up to HD resolution, which is also pretty impressive for a device of its age. It does a perfectly decent job in terms of capturing some very quick snaps. Here are a few more images that serves as illustration. Again, not the most sharpness because it's only five megapixels when you zoom in, but overall details and colors are actually captured pretty well. Now, in terms of pricing, if you are curious, uh, the iPhone 4 can be found online, such as Amazon or eBay, often in refurbished or used condition, for as low as $10. That's basically a throwaway price, since uh, not many folks anymore are really interested or really using this as a primary device anymore. It speaks to how fast the price of technology degrades. Uh, at the same time, though, when keeping in mind the super low price point, it's also hard to really complain too much, I suppose. Uh, the fact that it can take images at all and make phone calls is already, I would say, pretty commendable. Um, and overall, the responsiveness of the device is also not too shabby, again, considering its decade-old age. Kind of the last thing to really talk about would be the web browser. Uh, one unfortunate side of things is, although the browser does work for visiting pages, it's A, a little bit slow, and B, not something that you can really upgrade. If you go into the App Store, for example, and try to install Chrome or Opera Mini, a newer version of the browser, that's not really supported since all of those options require at least iOS version 8 or 9 and above to be installed. So you're basically stuck with us, the baked-in Safari as the only browsing option. So not all sites will be loaded perfectly and in the most uh, snappy of ways, although it still is technically functional. Let's load back a quick YouTube video. So a few takeaways here. First of all, the speaker quality actually is surprisingly good. Again, this was once a flagship, so back in the day there was a good amount of attention to detail on almost all components of its build. The Singo speaker is actually surprisingly rich without distorting even at higher volumes. In fact, there's still plenty of phone speakers today that don't sound quite as good as this. Uh, it doesn't sound sharp or shrill at all, even when you bump up the volume, and it just sounds very pleasant when watching back some quick clips with. Let's try going to a different page, such as going into Amazon and see how well it loads there. 
So you can see that it does offer some autocorrect as well as suggestions as we are typing, and it's decent. It's not lightning fast in terms of its responsiveness, but the page will at least load. You have to just be a bit more patient with it. This phone does not come with Siri built on end. That was introduced for the first time on the iPhone 4S. So there is no smart voice assistant. At least there's no AI assistant. There is voice commands, however, that can still be triggered by long holding on the home key. Um, but it's a lot more limited in terms of what you can do. Simple voice control allows you to play a specific song, uh, open up a specific app, things like that. But you can't ask it to search up content online. The battery life of the 1400 milliamp hour capacity cell is also decent. Actually, the technical capacity is still about the same as on larger iPhones like the iPhone 6 and 6S, which is pretty surprising. Uh, it keeps this device running for a full day without any problems. So so that's been our look back at the Apple iPhone 4 here in 2020, now that this device is a decade old. There's certain elements of it which have held up surprisingly well. For example, the overall design language of the build being made out of this dual glass material, looking still very clean and feeling quite solid and premium, still holds up quite well. Basic tools and apps, things like light web browsing, doing some occasional YouTube video watching through the browser, some occasional photo taking, taking phone calls, things like that do still function, but support for applications is really the area that is quite limited on this particular phone, just because most apps will now require at least iOS version 9 and above to be installed, even on older versions of apps. So in 2020, it's no longer really an enjoyable smartphone to be used, especially because of its small size and slightly aging hardware. But as far as being a basic phone, or if you're thinking of it as a feature phone or a backup device, or even an MP3 player, then in those cases, it definitely still functions. So you can check out more details if you are interested in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the iPhone 4 revisited here in 2020.